Hey, welcome back. So we're trying to prove that there are no circuit loops, which means we want to prove that uh, no matter how many up and down moves you pick, uh, that this is never going to be an integer. And so on the left, we've got the values of 3 to the x minus 2 to the x. And here we've got the values of 2 to the k minus 3 to the x. So along the left side is the number of up moves. Along the top is the number of down moves. So here we've got a circuit with six up moves and four down moves. So the bottom of that circuit has the value uh, 5 times 7 times 19 divided by 5 times 59. And we know that's not an integer here because 59 is a spoiler. And uh, so we can put a red block on this cell and rule out a circuit uh, of that shape. And what we want to do is to rule out all the circuits on this whole infinite chart. So these numbers look pretty random, and uh, let's keep digging in to see if we can demystify them. So let's start with the chart on the left. We looked at this last time. We saw, for example, that for every even x, uh, 3 to the x minus 2 to the x is divisible by 5. So what makes a number divisible by 5? We're going to uh, explain this with a little bit of clock math. So here's a 5-hour clock that they use on some planet. and uh, we're going to use it for divisibility by 5. Um, if we uh, advance three time steps, we can say, oh, OK, uh, 3 is not divisible by 5. In fact, th if you try to divide it by 5, you get a remainder of 3. Uh, advance a couple more time steps, and now it's uh, 0 o'clock, and uh, the number 5 is divisible by 5. How about the number 11? We just need six more. Uh, so we push it six more hours, and we're at 11, which is when you divide it by 5, you get a uh, remainder of 1. And then 4 more hours, we get 15, which is divisible by 5. OK, so what happens when we look at something like 2 to the x? And we uh, use this clock. So you got to imagine on this planet now, the clocks speed up exponentially. So after you know one unit of time, it's 1 o'clock. And then after another unit of time, it's 2 o'clock. But now the clock doubles its speed and goes to 4 o'clock. And then it goes to 8 o'clock, which uh, there's no such thing as 8 o'clock on this planet um, because the clock passes 0, so it's really uh, 3 o'clock. And then after 2 to the 4th, you're at 16 hours of past, time units have passed, and you're at 1 o'clock. So uh, this is an interesting thing happens here. So what happens is we repeat. Um, uh, the clock goes from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock to 3 o'clock to 1 o'clock. And then once it hits 1 o'clock, it repeats again, 2, 4, 3, 1. And notice that in this case, it hits every hour on the clock, except for 0, because 2 to the x is never going to be divisible by 5. OK, now imagine another planet where it, they use a 3 to the x clock. So that means the clock speeds up even more exponentially. So after three time units, it's uh, after one time unit, it's 3 o'clock. And then after two time units, it's 9 hours. But that's really, uh, OK, 4 o'clock. And then uh, 27, 81. So after 3 to the 4th is 81. So that's 1 o'clock. So here the pattern is uh, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock. And then it repeats. OK, so neither of these are ever going to be divisible by 5. But if you take 3 to the x minus 2 to the x, Sometimes it will be. So if the two clocks on the two planets show exactly the same time, uh, then we'll, we know that we're divisible by 5, because they have the same remainders when they, you divide them by 5. And uh, so is this kind of uh, unpredictable, 2, 4, 3, 1, and so on? Actually, it is. And if we could do it here, you'd see how weird it is to have like a 19 hour clock. You'd find out these two clocks agree on these two planets every third time step. Or a 211 hour clock, they agree every fifth time steps. All right, so that's a little clock math to explain these numbers. Um, how about the 2 to the k minus 3 to the x? That's the denominator. OK, this chart also looks pretty random. So are there any patterns? So just like we can think of this 5 as being inherited from this 5, we have the same thing here. So this 5 at x equals 1, k equals x minus, k minus x equals 2. If we double the values or triple them, we get to you know, 4, 2, 6, 3, 8, 4. 
um, you can see that the five is being inherited along this path. Or if you take the seven at two, two, you can see another seven at four, four, six, six, eight, eight. So it's like there's these rays of sunshine uh, and it's not only just fives along the way, uh, just like before, new factors get introduced at each point of the sunbeam here. And uh, so these rays are going to cover every cell here, every pair where kx and uh, k minus x have a common factor. Like, for example, 8 and 4 have a common factor of 2. Now pairs that don't have a common factor, like 5, 3 or 8, 5, um, that are co-prime, um, just like the primes on this chart at the left, they introduce a whole new factor into the table. So, um, and some of them, like 11, 3 here, introduce two new factors into the table simultaneously, just like this 29 and 71. So this co-prime thing is kind of important for divisibility, uh, just like it was for magnitude. If you remember, we ruled out already all the circuits where x and k minus x have a common factor, like this. An uh, interesting fact is that 61% of all pairs of integers are co-prime. Uh, so while the primes kind of thin out over time, uh, there's always plenty of co-primes. They kind of maintain their uh, uh, percentage. Okay, uh, so next time let's delve a little bit more deeply into this chart and see if we can uh, use divisibility to rule out circuits. See you next time.